Well, it's Trinity Sunday, as we well know, and the readings certainly remind us in uh, many ways of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We hear of creation mentioned in the readings going back to the beginning of time. We hear the words of Jesus himself, and we hear the promise of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. So very clear that it's Trinity Sunday. And if we really look at the uh, second reading, we're given some insight how to abide within, live within that dynamic of the Trinity. What do we hear in that second reading? Affliction, meaning suffering. Affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. Affliction, endurance, character, and hope, all elements of our relationship with the triune God as we abide within the life of the Trinity. And what do these things really mean? There's some insight for us today, I believe. First of all, affliction or suffering. How many of you like to suffer? Any takers? No takers. None of the masses. Nobody wants to suffer. And I suppose uh, it's accurate. None of us like to suffer, but suffer, suffering is a good thing. And affliction is a good thing. And why? Suffering is necessary because suffering is a path, a normal path, that allows us to grow in virtue. Genuine suffering is an invitation to grow in virtue. Suffering is really designed to perfect us, to make us stronger. What does it mean to be perfected? What is perfection? Perfection is allowing our own will to really be conformed more closely to the will of God. Perfection is conformity to that will, and suffering or affliction really allows us to grow in that grace. Affliction produces endurance. Well, what's endurance? That's a simple one. Endurance is that ability to withstand hardship or adversity or time of, of stress and strife. That's what endurance is, that ability to withstand hardship, adversity, stress, and strife. That's, that's endurance. So affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Well, I'm going to guess all of you will agree we know a lot of characters, don't we, huh? We know an awful lot of characters. But that's not uh, the same definition of character as referred to in the scripture. Really, what is character? Character is an en enduring pattern or trait that defines an individual. That's what character is. Character is that enduring pattern or trait that defines us. And very often we confuse character with personality. They're two different things. Character and personality are two different things. Now I'm going to offer a disclaimer of liability. I'm not offering a professional medical opinion or a scientific opinion, because I know many of you can offer that medical scientific opinion. But it is my humble opinion that uh, personality is something we're born with. We're born with our personality. I've certainly met very, very small, newly born children who on the way out of the womb, I swear, was high-fiving the doctor and inviting them out to lunch. You know, I've met some of these children who are just so extroverted and alive, huh? And I've met some very, very small infants that I think on the way out of the womb, they were saying, I'd really rather go back in there. <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice being all by myself, huh? Personality is uh, introvert and extrovert, dynamic and alive and outgoing, or more quiet and reserved and subtle. That's a personality. Character is something very different. Character is what is within us that defines us. Character can develop and change throughout our lives. That's what character is. Nowhere in the scripture 
Does God ever tell us to change our personality? There is no quote that I can come up with where God says, you know, you really need to be more extroverted. <laughs> you need to be more introverted. You need to be more outgoing. You need to be, you know, a little less outgoing. There's nowhere. But God regularly, Old Testament and New, tells us we need to change our character. And certainly in the, the New Testament, to conform our character to that of Christ in the Gospel, to allow that to be our character. Character is really the result of uh, deliberate choices that we make. Character is a deliberate choice that really basically reflects our deepest convictions. Our character really expresses what we truly believe. That's character. I'm sure you've met some who have a character of being a liar. Can't trust a word of what they say. I'm sure you've met some who have the character of being one who cheats. <laughs> you always second guess. Hopefully we all strive to have the character of truthfulness, to speak the truth and live the truth at all times, that spirit of truth referred to in the gospel. Character is really important because it ultimately determines how we relate to one another and what others will expect of us in a given situation. If you really want to know someone's true character, observe them in a difficult situation and you will know their deepest conviction and belief. That truth will come out. Norman Schwarzkopf great military leader of our nation once said, leadership is the potent combination of character and strategy. But if you need to do without one of the two, do without the strategy. There's a man who knew strategy as a military leader. Leadership is the potent combination of character and strategy, but if you have to make do without one of the two, make do without the strategy. Booker T. Washington once said, character is power. And isn't in our contemporary world what it's all about? Power. In our contemporary world, aren't we concerned about power? As you watch unfold the elections for the time of November, isn't it all about power? Who will control the White House? The Democrats or the Republicans? Power. Who is going to control the Senate? Democrats or Republicans? Power. Who is going to control the House of Representatives? Democrats or Republicans? It's power. We're very concerned about power in our culture today. George Washington once said, if you want power, be a person of character. If you want power, be a person of character. Simple question this Trinity Sunday is, what character do you possess? Do you possess the character of Christ or not? And what qualities, what character is it that we are looking to give power to lead our nation and our world as we plan to vote once again? What is that character that we will place into the White House, into the Senate seat, and into the House of Representatives? Character. Character ultimately produces hope. Pope is something we all look for. And uh, our retired Pope, Pope Benedict, in his second encyclical, it was entitled on Christian Hope. He spent about 200 pages talking about hope. Now, lucky for you, there's a 1230 Mass, or we could read the whole thing right now, you know. And, uh, but uh, it'll suffice to say, the first half of his encyclical on Christian Hope the Pope says, you know, we, we look for hope in wrong places. He said very often we look for hope in the stock market. We look for hope in our career. We look for hope in 
medical advancement or advancement of technology, or we look for hope in political systems and ideologies. And he goes through an exhaustive list, and he said, these things in and of themselves are not bad things, but if that is where we're rooting hope, ultimately we're going to be disappointed. Why? Because they're human constructs, and ultimately they will fail and disappoint us. And he said, if we, if we really want hope, there are three places we need to look for hope, and I've mentioned these before, even put them into the bulletin in my pastor's article at Easter time. And I know you cling to every word I write, huh? But just in case you don't recall, <laughs> the Pope called them three schools. He said, you really want to have hope? He said, first of all, the school of prayer. So if you want to have hope and you want to be an instrument of hope for others, you need to pray. Pray every day. Pray ardently, not just in asking and thanking for what we've received, but to spend time in genuine worship and praise, to spend time in adoration, to spend time in contemplation, to genuinely pray. And as you genuinely pray and listen to God, as I tell the teenagers on retreat, God gave us two ears for a reason versus one mouth. We've we got to listen two times as much as we talk. I think that's another non-medical opinion. Uh, as we listen to God, we grow in hope and can be that instrument of hope. Secondly, the Pope said, if you want to learn hope and be an instrument of hope, go and do something. He called it the school of action. Serve someone. A story I know I've told a few times. I'm not sure in a homily at Sunday Mass, though, Back the first time I really learned this was 30 years ago when I first entered the seminary. My first summer assignment was at St. John Canty Parish on Broadway in Swinburne on the east side, tough neighborhood. And we ran a soup kitchen there. One of the things I had to do Monday through Friday was peel potatoes and wash pots, pans, and trays. It was an easy job. I'm Polish. It's, we clean. That's what we do. It was, you know, it's easy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and one day it got very hard because Father Bob Golumbek, the pastor, came to me and he said, kid, follow me. And I put down the apron from washing the dishes and he put a tray in my hand and uh, he said, go through the food line. And he did the same with me. And when we got to the end of the line, he said, now go and sit with someone and listen to them said, we all know you know how to talk. Please listen, listen. And so I sat with a young man. He was about 30, 35 years of age. And I listened to him. I learned that he had a master's degree. I learned that he was married and had children. And I learned that he had, at one time, a very successful career. But then I learned all of the events of his life that led him to be indigent. Here, I thought I was providing hope for him with a meal five days a week. And by the end of listening, the great gift of hope he gave to me is he taught me the very delicate balance of life and how, for any of us, that can change at a moment's notice. Gift of hope. Do something. That school of action. And finally, the Pope said, if you really want to have hope and be an instrument of hope, suffer with Christ on the cross. Back to the first point, to find laying down your life for someone else to suffer with and for them or to accept whatever suffering comes your way and grow in grace is a way to learn hope and be that instrument of hope. Today, Trinity Sunday, we simply reflect on our own ability to suffer and to allow that to produce endurance in our life, and to allow that endurance to produce character and to question, do we have the character of Christ? And if we have that character of Christ, are we really that instrument of his hope in the world today?